In this video, we are going to solve the lead code problem of the day and the problem is count the hidden sequences. The problem category is of medium level but I would say once you understand the trick behind the problem, it is going to be really easy to code the solution. In the problem, the given input is an array of integers and a lower and upper bound. The lower and upper bound are integers as well. The output which we need to give is the number of possible sequences or I would say the number of possible hidden sequences in which the consecutive elements difference is equal to our array. So it might sound confusing but let me make it simple for you. So whatever input we are given is an array of integers, right? And what we need to find out is how many sequences or different arrays are possible in which the difference of the consecutive elements is equal to our array. For example, if the given array in the input is 1, minus 3 and 4 and the value of lower and upper is 1 and 6, I will come to this, I will explain you this part but for now forget about it, okay? Let us say we just have an array and the elements of the arrays are actually the differences of a particular hidden sequence and we need to find out how many hidden sequences are possible. For example, one of the sequence can be 3, 4, 1 and 5. We need to see the consecutive elements and its difference, right? For example, consecutive elements are these two or these two elements or these two elements, basically the elements which are adjacent to each other. So the difference of the first two element is 4 minus 3, that is 1. In the question, it is mentioned that the difference is actually the next number minus the previous number. So 4 minus 3 is 1, 1 minus 4 is equal to minus 3 and 5 minus 1 is equal to 4. So you need to find out how many different arrays or how many different sequences like this are possible in which the difference of the consecutive elements is equal to our array. There is one more sequence. You can say 5 minus 4 is 1, then 2 minus 5 is minus 3 and 6 minus 2 is 4. Now if you forget about this lower and upper bound, then I would say you can have any number of sequence and the difference of the consecutive elements of those sequence is going to be equal to this one. How can I say this? See, let us start with any random number. Let us start with 57. Okay. I am saying that the first element of my sequence is going to be 57. Then I can actually form an array or a sequence in which the difference of the consecutive element can be equal to 1, minus 3 and 4. I can say the next element is 58. So the difference is 1, right? Now the next element can be 55. So the difference is 55 minus 58 is minus 3. And then the next element can be 59. And I would say 59 minus 55 is equal to 4. So if I don't have a lower and upper bound, I can form infinite number of sequences like this. But the thing is, in the question it is mentioned that whatever sequence you are creating or whatever sequence you are claiming that the difference in the consecutive element of those sequence is going to be the array in the input then the elements of that sequence cannot be less than the lower bound and cannot be more than the upper bound. So the lower bound and upper bound are basically two integers which are defining the range of your elements in the hidden or possible sequence. The lower and upper is included, right? So your sequence can have lower and upper as well but nothing should be less than lower and no element should be more than the upper. So here you will notice that the lower is 1 and upper is 6. So in this case the output is 2 because we have two sequence which is possible. We have two number of sequence which are possible in which the consecutive elements difference is equal to our array. Now see, the thing is if you will notice here none of the elements in our array or in the sequence is less than 1 or more than 6. All are within this range. Now if I say that let's start with 5. 5 is within the range right. Then the next element has to be 6. So that 6 minus 5 is equal to 1. So the array is 5 comma 6 and the next element has to be 3 right. 3 minus 6 will be equal to minus 3. But the next element has to be 7. So that 7 minus 3 is 4. Now this element is the problem. We cannot start with 5 and that's because if we start with 5, we need to form a sequence in which there is an element which is outside of the range and that is why the output is 2. We are starting from 3, we are starting from 4. We cannot start with 5. We cannot even start with 2 because if we start with 2, then the problem is next element will be 3 and the next element is going to be 0. So that 3 minus 2 is 1 and 0 minus 3 is minus 3. Well, this is the problem. Our range is 1 to 6 and this element 0 is outside of our range, less than the lower, right? So at this point of time, I think we have the clear understanding of how this array is working and what kind of output we need to give. So you just need to give the output as the number of sequence which are possible, right? Now, if you don't have any sequence which is possible, the output is going to be 0. For example, if the input is 3, 5, 6 and my lower and upper range is, is 1 to 4, then I cannot form any element or I cannot form any sequence in which the differences are going to be 3, 5 and 6 and the elements are going to be within this range. So in that case, the output is going to be 0. Now my question to you is, if I have this difference array, then what is the length of my sequence in which the consecutive element difference is going to be this array given in the input? It is always going to be one more than this array, right? You will see here we have three elements. So here we are going to have four elements. And that is because to form this element, you need two elements, right? Because this is the difference of two elements. So you need two consecutive elements. So every element is made up of two consecutive elements. So this will require the first two elements. This will require the next two elements and this will require the next two elements. So when you have n number of elements, you will need an array which has n plus 1 elements. Now what is the process to solve this? 
remember i told you that this is going to be really easy once you know the trick so the trick is very simple you need to know the range right and the range is given in the problem so if the range is 1 to 6 then i would say that i start with 1 and i end with 6 right none of my elements are going to be outside of this range in any of my possible sequence right so i would say i have six numbers 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 these are the only six numbers which should be in our sequence now what is the lowest number we have we have one right so if we start with this lowest number because we cannot start with zero right zero is outside of our range so when we start with this number then how the array or how the sequence will, will look like so let us see we start with one right our first element is one then what should be the next element it should be two right that's because two minus one is one so this should be two so that two minus one is one then what should be the next element how can i form the difference of minus three the next element has to be minus one right so that minus one minus two is equal to minus three right and now what will be the last element that is going to be equal to three so that three minus minus one is equal to four right four is the difference here now i will come to this let me show you one formula which is very important to understand see the formula is any difference which is given in the input right that is equal to the next element minus the previous element right we know that right so now what will be the next element it will be equal to the difference plus previous right that's a basic maths previous will go this side so next is equal to difference plus previous so this is how i am forming this array right if i am starting with my lowest range one to get the next element i would say the previous element plus the difference right so one plus one is two right now to form the next element i would say the previous element two plus the difference which is minus three so two plus minus three is minus one and to form the next element i would say this is my previous element and this is my difference so minus one plus four is equal to three right so this is how we are going to create our array so now tell me is this a possible sequence no it is not because there is one element minus one which is outside of this range now you will have to think about the basic maths here if i am starting from one my lowest element which i am getting out of this is minus one right if i will start with two do i need to recalculate what is my lowest element what will be my lowest element no right so when we start with two it is going to be two plus one it is three then three plus minus three is zero and zero plus four is going to be four so the array is going to be two three zero and four the most basic thing you will have to notice here is when we are starting from one this is our array when we are starting from two all the elements in our array is just plus one of this array right 1 plus 1 is 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, minus 1 plus 1 is 0, and 3 plus 1 is 4. And that's the basic math you will have to understand, right? When we started with 1, that's our lowest range. The minimum element we are getting is minus 1, right? And that is a problem. We cannot have an element which is less than lower. So we will have to try an element which is more than 1, right? When we try with 2, we are getting the minimum element as 0, right? And this is also outside of this range. When we are going to try with 3, my minimum element is going to be 1, right? That's because my minimum element was minus 1, then 0, then I again increased my first element then it is going to be 0 plus 1 which is 1 now this 1 is within the range so from here i can see that if i will start from 3 that is my first element will be 3 then in this case my array will look like 3 4 1 and 5 right one more than this array right plus 1 to each element so 2 plus 1 3 plus 1 0 plus 1 and 4 plus 1 now it is very important to understand here is we don't need to recalculate these values we just need to start from the lowest number and the moment we start from the lowest number we create this array we need to fetch two very important values here the minimum element which is possible that is minus one and the maximum element which is possible that is three because we need to be sure that the maximum element is not outside of this range not more than the upper range right so here the maximum element is three now this data is telling me that if i start with the lowest number my minimum number is going to be minus one maximum is going to be three for now let us forget about the maximum just focus on this now i know that if i am starting with one my minimum element cannot be more than one right because one is always going to be the part of the array so let us say 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the array we create. So still this 1 will be the part of the array and my minimum element will always be less than or equal to the lower element, right? Now when it is equal to the lower element, then I can say that I can start from this array. But if it is less, something which is less than my lower, then I can say that I cannot start with this lower element 1 because if I start with 1, my minimum element is getting reduced, which is less than the range or less than the range which is possible. And how much jump or how much shortage do you have? I have the shortage of 2, right? Because if I start with 1, I am getting down to minus 1. But if I start with 3, then my minimum is 1, which is fine, right? So I need to jump 2 places. I need to start from 2 more, so that at least my lower range is fine, okay? Now I know that my maximum answer can be 6 in this case. That's because either we can start from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? We cannot start with any other element. And if we start with any particular element, then my array or my sequence is going to be unique, right? I cannot say that I will start with 3 and I can create more than one type of array because my differences are fixed. So the maximum possible answer is 6. Now, I know that 1 and 2 cannot be the part of the answer, right? I cannot start with 1 and 2. So 
so now my maximum answer is reduced right i can only start with three four five and six right now what is the formula or what is the code we are going to write to know that what is the shortage it's very simple it is just equal to lower minus the minimum which you have got when you started with lower okay you just need to find out if you start with lower then what is your minimum element and you can just take the difference and that's the shortage if you start from that much more you will actually get your lower element as the minimum element in your array so i would say we have a shortage and that shortage is equal to lower minus the minimum we got and lower is one the minimum we got is minus one that is equal to two right so we have a shortage of two we need to start not from one but from one plus the shortage that is three so at this point of time these two are eliminated from our answers we just have four possible answers and that too we are not sure that all the four are possible and that is because if we start with one our maximum was going till three right now if i start with three my maximum will go to five which is fine i can take this as an answer right this is a part of the answer i can even start with four and my maximum in this case is going to be six right so four five two six but if i start with five my maximum is going to be seven right this element will become seven and in this case i can say that i cannot take five and i cannot take six so the only two possible answers that is the only two possible elements with which i can start my sequence is three and four now how can i find out of these numbers that till which point i can go now this is going to be really simple see what you need to do is you just need to focus on the fact that the maximum number when you started with the lowest element is three you got a shortage of two right because you will have to jump from one to three so that your lower bound is fine starting from not from minus one but from one now at this point of time your maximum element is five right so from here i can say that if i am starting from the lowest possible number which is a correct answer is three then the maximum i am going is till five the maximum i can go is till upper which is six in this case right so i can choose only those numbers which can give the maximum of five or six then i would say the formula is this is the maximum we can get if we start with the lowest element possible that is three this is the maximum till which we can go so i would say it's simple just say six minus five plus one that is upper minus the maximum maximum possible with the lowest element their difference plus one so let me show you this clearly that what is the solution approach here the solution approach is going to be o of n time complexity and o of one space complexity the steps are you need to create a prefix element which is going to be the lowest element possible and your minimum and maximum will also be the lowest element possible this lowest is coming from the lower and upper range this is our lower okay now we have an example one minus three and four our lower is one and upper is six right what we can do is at each point i can just process this information one minus three and four and after processing all three i just need to find out what is the minimum which is possible and what is the maximum which is possible so i just need to say prefix plus my current difference so prefix is one my current difference is one so prefix is equal to two at this point of time i would say that my maximum element possible is two right and the minimum element it will still be one then the difference is minus three and now the prefix will be equal to prefix plus difference right so the prefix is two the difference is minus three and this is equal to minus one so i would say the minimum possible is not one now i can go till minus one and the maximum possible is going to be two right that's two the next difference is four so prefix will be equal to minus one the previous prefix plus four three so now the current prefix is three we have an element three which is possible if we start with the lowest number or lower range then the minimum possible is minus one and the maximum which is possible is three we are going to keep track of this now what is the shortage we have the shortage we have is lower minus minimum possible one is the minimum possible according to the question but if we start with one we are going to minus one so their difference will tell me what is the shortage i have the shortage i have is two so i would say my maximum possible if i start with the correct number or the correct lower range will not be three which was here but it should be three plus the shortage so it is going to be five and my upper value is equal to six right so i would say i can go till upper that is six my answer is going to be upper minus the maximum possible this maximum possible is when we are starting with the lowest number possible so upper minus the maximum possible plus one is going to be our final answer and the thing is we need to be sure that this answer is positive because if my maximum possible is let's say 15 okay which is outside of our range so this value will be 6 minus 5 plus 1 which is negative if this is negative it means we don't have any possible sequence and in this case we need to give the output as 0 so i would say the output will be the maximum of either 0 or this element because if there are no sequence possible this value will be negative so now let me take you to the coding section and let me show you how we can code this using python so the code part is going to be really simple we just need to create three variables prefix minimum possible and maximum possible and all three will be lower initially all the three values will be lower then we are going to run a loop on our differences and we are going to update the value of prefix every time prefix will be equal to the prefix plus the difference the current difference we have then we are going to update the minimum possible and the maximum possible that will be equal to the minimum of the minimum possible and prefix and the maximum of maximum possible and prefix then we are going to create the shortage this value lower minus the minimum possible is the shortage and we are going to add this shortage to our maximum possible right now we just need to return the maximum of two values either it will be zero or upper minus the maximum possible plus one right 
So this is the complete code for this particular solution. And if you will submit this, you will see that it's actually a very efficient code for this particular problem. So yes, the runtime is good and memory wise also it is really good. So I would say this is a good solution and a clean code for this particular problem. And that's it for this video guys. If you found this video helpful and if this video explains to the problem as well as the solution as well, then make sure that you hit that like button. And if you have not subscribed to my channel as of now, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel as well. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching this video guys.